Let's start with the health care bill. Dr. Howard Dean is the former chairman of the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, and of course the former governor of liberal Vermont. Now here you are, sir, joining the right wing well, they in this killing me. field on health care. You will bring this bill down. You no, will kill that, it. That is not what I said. Will Chris. you kill it? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I would vote against it if I were in the Senate. Well, Look, oh, yeah, that would be important since they need 60 Democrats. Well, they, I mean, there are some alternatives. One thing they can do is strip the bill down. There's some good things in this bill. Uh, one, uh, is the exchange mechanism they use in Massachusetts. That's a good way to buy insurance. Two, there's money in there because of Tom Harkin for preventive, uh, prevention and wellness. Bernie Sanders has some money in there for community health centers. There's good stuff. What in this. don't you want in the bill that's in there now? I don't want all the goodies for the insurance companies. Here's what happens. We were promised that if we, in exchange for putting a ton of money into the insurance companies, which I was willing to do as long as there were other choices, that, for example, people with pre-existing conditions would be able to get insurance. Well, it turns out the insurance companies in the fry and print can charge 300% more for those uh, folks, for older folks, than they can for younger folks. So that's not really what happened. Uh, and there's case after case. You are mandated under this bill to buy insurance. If you don't buy it, you pick it fine, and the insurance company can take up to 30% out of your premium dollar and pay CEOs $20 million and put the rest in shareholders' pockets. This is a bill for insurance companies. Wait a companies. minute. They can do what if you don't do what? The, the, the insurance, the, the insurance companies are much less effective than Medicare. They take a ton of money out and put it in non-health non care expenditures. If you buy a policy, which you now have to do under this bill, right. or pay a fine. Well, some policy. Some policy. The insurance company may take up even more than 30% of the dollars you pay. We'll go to some other insurance company then. Well, yeah, but have you noticed that there aren't many insurance companies that get anywhere near the efficiency of Medicare? Well, we don't have Medicare for anybody under 65. Well, we could have. And that's well, what, what government would you like to have pass this bill? Because the government we have right now has 60 Democrats in it. And one of those 60 Democrats is Joe Lieberman of Connecticut, who refuses to go along with it. So you have 59 Democrats. Yeah, and you know what, what? are you going to do about it? Well, luckily, there's a procedure that's been used 23 times in the last 20 years, including recently by George Bush, to pass tax cuts. That's what should have been done. It wasn't done. But there's you can't do any of the reforms in insurance if you do it that route. You don't need the reforms in insurance. You're not going to do anything on pre-existing conditions? There are no reforms on insurance. That's just what I'm telling you. If you can charge somebody three times as much for an insurance policy, how are they suddenly going to afford, even if you now say, well, the insurance company's got to offer it, you can't afford it. So you, you, would, go, uh, you would go through this reconciliation process and basically rip the Senate apart. You'd just do that. No, I, the Senate will do it. Rip the Senate apart. It's been used before. This, has been used, this process has been used yeah, okay. 20 Three to times. create a new federal program. Twenty-three like this. times. When no, has it ever no, been used actually, to create a federal program? I would use it to. Expand. No. When has it ever been used to create a federal program as big as a seventh of the American economy? I would simply expand Medicare. That's simple. That's all you have to do. By reconciliation. Yes. And this would, this, would, this would destroy the United States Congress. Why would it destroy the United States Because America? the Republicans would simply say, minute, no Chris, more bills will be passed on any other matter. Excuse me. We have used this 23 times before. Not to Bush, create a major national program. A major national program wasn't created by George Bush when he ran us into trillions of dollars. Yes, but what cut. program did he create? He created enormous tax cuts of right. every sort. A, you're, missing, you're, you're dodging the question. You I'm can't create it. Medicare. You can't create Social Security by reconciliation. You can't create it, but you can expand it. Well, we already. It isn't Medicare. Medicare if it's for young people. Medicare is for retirees. Exactly the same. All you got to do is change the fine okay, print you can and argue lower this. the age. Okay, when you, or, frankly, you could start all over again in two years. This is demagoguery. You know it's not going to happen. It could, why you know not? They're not gonna, why isn't they're, it? They're not going to do it because it won't work in the Senate because it'll grind the Senate to a halt. In two years, it'll not destroy gonna, the body. We're not going to have 65 votes, 60 votes in two years. We'll have some closer to You don't 55. have 60 now. You'd have Lieberman aboard. What right. would you do to Lieberman? If you were leader, Lieberman is not the issue. I, he's not. He's no, sixty. I mean, he's number sixty. He can do what he wants. I mean, is he a Democrat? No, of course not. What is he? Well, that's a good question. You have to ask Joe. Look, I'm not interested in dissecting Lieberman or anybody. Why else. are you afraid to take on Lieberman? I'm not. I'm hardly afraid to take. Everybody on. seems to be able to. I, I don't know. Maybe he's good at fundraising. I ran I against what. the guy, right? I'm not hardly afraid to take on Joe. Look, the issue is this doesn't. When did just, you run against him? Oh, for president. I'm sorry. Back this in, is, in that's, 2004, that's right? That's right. This is not about Joe Lieberman. This is about whether we're going to have a decent health care bill.
bill in the country. Right now in the Senate, we don't have one. We have one that does some good things, but it does more bad things than good things. Well, all I know is watching this the last couple of weeks, every time it looks like the Senate Democrats are about to unite around 60 Democrats and get something done and beat the filibuster, Joe Lieberman comes up with something over the weekend, usually on a Sunday television show with all the cameras going, and he says something like, well, not the public option, no, and oh yeah, my staffer, whoever put the word out this weekend, that said I'd go along with the buy-in at uh, 55, age 55 for Medicare, that's not going either way. He's like Lucy in Peanuts. He holds the football till Charlie Brown's about to kick it, and then he drops it. And now you won't even take him on. I'm not interested in discussing See, Joe Lieber. I, I care about health care. Look, this the, the the culture in Washington is. Gets, oh, it's no, Joe Lieber. It's numbers. It's so and so. It's 60. Now, democracy the question works. Is, it's the reason you didn't get elected like president. It's numbers. Yeah. You have to get a certain number. In this case, to stop a filibuster, you need 60. You votes. know what the problem is? Lyndon Chris? Johnson was able to do it with civil rights. They haven't been able to do they it because they can't unite Lyndon their own Johnson's party. Or, I'll tell right. you what the problem is. The problem is not 60 votes or George or you know, whoever Joe Lieberman or anybody else. The problem. Is Democrats aren't tough enough. Oh, okay. If we, if so, it's an adjective that's missing. If we were, yeah. If we okay. were, if we were the Republicans right now, this bill would be done through reconciliation, okay. done, just like Bush okay. did, and just like 23 other times okay. it's been done. We, we're not. Here, tough let enough. me ask you a question. We have 60 Democrats in the Senate. We have 59 plus Lieberman, who's an independent, used to be a Democrat. Uh, how come none of them are willing to go for reconciliation? They don't want to do it. I you don't want know. To, you're not a senator, I so don't you know, know something they don't know. What I know is it's been done 23 times in the last 20 years. Not to create a massive national program. It's not supposed not, to be used that way. We don't need reconciliation. To. I worked on the Hill in the Budget Committee for years. Right. I know what it's for. It's to reconcile what Congress passes as legislation with the budget numbers. It's not there to create new programs. Well, I we don't, I'm not asking to create a new program. I'm asking just to do just what George Bush okay, did. George right. Bush had existing tax okay, cuts. Let's ask, and he let me ask them. a member of the United States Senate. Let's thank you, Governor Dean. Dr. Thank Dean. you. It's I know where pleasure. you stand. Go with reconciliation. Let's bring that up. Senator Mary Landrieu is a member of the Appropriations Committee. Knows all about the spending on Capitol Hill. Senator Landrieu, uh, Dr. Dean's here with me now, making a very hard case, saying that you guys don't, aren't tough enough. That you won't support the use of this procedure called reconciliation. What's he? Is he right or wrong? Are you not tough enough? He is wrong. We are tough enough. And you are right, Chris, about the process of reconciliation. It is not to be used to create broad additional new federal programs. Yes, it has been used in the past. It might have even been occasionally abused in the past. But you know what its purpose is. It's to reconcile budget numbers and to use for deficit reduction, not for the expansion. The other point I was listening I want to make is there is plenty of reform still left in this bill and there's still plenty to fight for. Medicare will be strengthened. Preventive care will be free for the first time. In my state alone, a, one million people that do not have insurance today, when this bill passes and goes fully in effect, will have coverage. That is something to fight for. Look, I don't like everything in the bill. There are things that I fought for that aren't in here. I'd like more tax cuts for small business. But the fact of the matter is, this is the closest we've come in over 40 years Years to do something good for the American people, and we shouldn't um, we shouldn't get weak need at this moment. Is that become a bidding auction where someone like you from Louisiana has been able to get concessions on issues you care about because you're a hard vote to get? No, every senator, all 60 senators, submitted lists to Harry Reid, to Max Baucus, and to Tom Harkin, and to Chris Dodd. Those are the leaders that have managed this for a year. You know how this process yeah. works. And we say to them, look, we're getting ready to go into a health care debate. These are some special issues that mean a lot to my state. In my situation, Chris, and you know this well, we are not a rich state. You know how some states have certain percentages they have to pay towards Medicaid. If you're a rich state, state, you pay more, like you pay 50 percent, and the federal government pays 50. If you're a poor state, you only pay 30 percent. Well, what happened after Katrina was our numbers were sort of distorted because of all the money that came in yeah. temporarily, and we got to be like New York. Well, we're not like New York. We're still good old Louisiana. And so that's all I ask. Let us be treated the way we have been for the last 20 years, and that's what the leadership agreed. And number one, it didn't buy my vote. That wouldn't be enough to get my vote. What is enough for me? Does this bill work for the people I represent? Is it the right thing for America? And it is the best we can do under the circumstance. And I'm convinced all those things are yes.
Let's talk about political practicality. You're a moderate Democrat from Louisiana. Let me ask you this. If uh, some of the people on the left, like Howard Dean, say, wait it out, get more Democrats in there, try some other route, I am baffled by that because I don't know how you're going to get more Democratic senators in the election you face next year where there's five open seats and not one I can see a Democrat being favored in, whether it's Ohio, Missouri, uh, Kentucky, or even New Hampshire. I don't see a Democrat actually favored in those seats in this environment. Do you think it's like the Democrats will ever have more than 59 Democrats in the Senate and one difficult independent named Joe Lieberman? Will you ever have a better deal where you can pass health care? Chris, in the near future, I don't think we're going to have a better lineup than we have now. And, you know, Senator Lieberman has helped us on dozens and dozens of votes where we needed 60 votes, and he's been there. He just has, has a little different view than many in the party, but actually I understand his view. He said, we're going to reform health care, which means we're going to reform the insurance market, not eliminate it. There are governors like Governor Dean who wants to eliminate the insurance companies in America. The it's president not did true. not it's run not on that. True. That is true. Governor that is. The, the president didn't run on that. He ran on reforming it and fixing it. So Joe has a little different view of wanting the private sector okay. to have more, uh, you know, at the table. I sort of agree with that, but I'm a little bit more open to compromise on it than he is. But nonetheless, we need 60 votes. Okay. We're still working with Olympia Snow, hoping we can get her vote as well. Well, good luck, Senator Mary Landry. Thank, thank you. You had a last thought, Governor? Yeah, well, first of all, that's obviously not true that I want to eliminate the insurance market. Second of all, I'd be interested to know well, why Senator Landry. Well, you just spent a half an hour I, I, beating I, up on them, Howard. And I, I we mean, need Mary, to I'd like to know why you wouldn't, why plenty. you deny my people the choice there to sign up for plenty. an alternative. You are there's forcing us into insurance companies. In this bill for you, you, you took okay, away our choice. You took away our choice. We're in overtime here. One thirty seconds for the governor and thirty seconds for the senator. You would not let us choose another program. You forced us into the insurance industry. We don't want to be forced into the insurance industry. You took away our choice. Okay, your third response, the final response never, by the you senator. Never, you never had that choice to begin with. The president, the president campaigned wanted, on it, Mary. No, the president of the United States for okay. campaigned he for it. Yes, he most certainly he did. He most certainly did. He, did he, he, he absolutely did. You are not accurate in that. He campaigned for the federal employee benefit with a public option. That's what he campaigned for. insurance that you have, you'll be able to keep it. And he also said there'll be a public option along with a federal employee benefit package. That is and what he said. Look, I just stop there for a second, Governor. I've got to let the senator there respond. No public Thank you. The senator gets to respond. Is that your last word, Senator? Because I want you to have the final word. Yes, here. my last point. Thank you, Chris. In the bill that the governor is now saying he's not for, there is a national nonprofit option that gives the same choices that members of Congress and federal employees have. If that's not enough, I don't know what is. Okay, thank you very much, Senator Mary Lange of Louisiana and Dr. Howard Dean. Gentlemen, thank you. And ladies,